In this video, we're going to be learning about how to stretch audio in Cakewalk by BandLab. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So from time to time, you may want to stretch some audio in Cakewalk by BandLab. Perhaps you've got some messy playing which you need to tidy up, or maybe you want to change the tempo of the whole project and you need the audio to follow. Or perhaps you've got some existing loops which you want to fit in with the existing tempo of your project. I'm going to cover all of that in today's video, starting off by tidying up some very messy playing by moi. So here I am in Cakewalk and I've got this acoustic guitar part loaded up and I'm going to play it with the metronome switched on so that you can hear it in the context of the click. So let's just have a quick listen now. Now there's some little sort of percussive notes in this guitar part where I've muted the strings and I'm not playing the full chord and that gives it a kind of nice rhythmic feel. Um, here's an example of one here, have a quick listen. And again, yeah, they're very slight, but they do add to that rhythmic feel. The only problem is I've got a couple right at the beginning which are a little bit out of time and it's really kind of irritating me. I definitely want to fix it. So how do we move these kinds of things around in the audio? Well, it's really quite easy. I'm going to start off by making sure I've got my clip selected. So I'll select that now and I'll press Alt and A on the keyboard to bring up the audio snap palette, okay? Now I'm just going to enable that by clicking on this enable button here. Now this has detected some transients in here and it's used these yellow lines which are transient markers to highlight those transients. These are kind of peaks in the audio where Cakewalk thinks it relates to a beat of some kind. So I'll close my audio snap now. It's the transient markers which we need to move around to correct this audio. Now what I'm going to do is just select that first bar there, just like so, at the ruler at the top. I'm going to press Shift and L on the keyboard to set up a loop so that we can hear it going round and round. And then I'll just start right at the beginning here, um, or so I'll just set my playhead there, and I'm going to press control on the right arrow on the keyboard just to zoom in, okay? That should give me a nice view of the bit I want to fix. Now it's these ones here that I want to fix. I feel like they're ever so slightly out. Now before I start moving these transient markers around so that I can correct this audio, I just want to make sure I've got my, uh, my snap feature set to the right resolution. So snap is on at the moment. Um, I'm going to set it to 1 32nd notes, and also I'm going to set it to triplets. Now I tried this out beforehand so I knew what was the best setting here. You're going to have to set it to the correct setting for your music. But the triplets is what's giving this guitar that kind of skippy kind of feel. Now as I move my cursor around you can see it's snapping to that resolution which I've set up. Now if I move over to these beats here you can see that this one here is a little bit after that grid point there and that's what's making it feel out of time. Okay so I'm going to move that. Now I'm going to drag it. Make sure when you drag it that you either grab the top half or the bottom half, not the middle. That does something different, which I'll explain about later. But I'm just going to grab the bottom half here and I'll drag that across and you'll see that the audio has been retimed. It's been shifted around and it's changed the color of it so that you can see that that's happened. I'll just undo that just so you can see again. I'll just drag it across and you can see it's retimed that audio. Now I'm going to have a look at uh, one or two others. This one is probably a little bit out as this one is as well. So sometimes it's not just the actual notes that themselves which feel out. It can be the ones before, hand or after which make it sound even more out. So these ones are probably okay. And this one, I'm not quite sure about. I'll have to have a listen to it. Um, let's have a listen to it now and see if that's fixed at all. Yeah, it's almost there. I think this one here is slightly out, but I think that Cakewalk has not detected that transient correctly. And that's what I'm going to show you how to change now. So if you think it's not quite on the right spot, then what I'm going to do is turn my snapping off. And this time I'm going to drag the center of this transient. So the cursor becomes across here. I'm just going to push it this way a bit. Now trial and error is going to teach you um, about this. So I have done a little bit of trial and error uh, to be fair on this, so I know. Uh, don't be worried if it takes you a little bit longer to figure out just where those should be if you do have to move them. So that's set up. I'm going to turn snap back on and oh look at that. I think that was making a difference. Let's just see if I was correct. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, it's sort of okay. I could probably fiddle with that a little bit more to make it right. But I think you get the gist of what I'm doing. So you can just use these transients to sort of use these as points to stretch the audio around to get things in just the right place. Now, if you find that you want to reset something, you can right click on this one, for example, if you feel you've messed it up and click on reset. That's just going to go back to the way it was before. Um, also, you can add your own ones in. So um, for example, if I wanted to add in a new transient here, if it hadn't detected one, I can press Alt on the keyboard and just click there and that creates a new transient marker and I can move that around and it will retime that audio however I want to do it. Now, if I want to get rid of that, I can just right click on it and delete that marker. You can't delete markers which were there, uh, put there by Cakewalk, those sort of automatic ones which you started off. If you right click, you'll see there is no delete option there. You can disable them, however, so I'll just click on disable and disable that one, and that's fine. So that's a really nice way if you kind of want to surgically correct some of your audio. Let's just have a quick listen again. <laughs> Yeah, still not perfect, need to work on it a little bit more, but I hope that's helpful to you. So I shared this tip in a recent video and lots of you found it very helpful. So apologies to you if you already know about this. I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes explaining it for those people who missed it. So I've got the same guitar part here in Cakewalk and the project tempo is set to 71. You can see that up there. So I want to change that to 76, make it a little bit faster. So I'll click where it says 71, type in 76 on my keyboard, press enter to change the tempo. Let's have a listen to that now. That's horrible. It's completely out of time because although the project tempo has changed, the guitar is still being played at 71 beats per minute. So I'll undo that. And what we need to do is highlight that guitar clip. I'll do that now. And then I'm going to press um, I'm going to press Alt A on the keyboard to bring up the audio snap palette. And then I'm going to click down here where it says clip follows projects. So I click on that. You see some things happen there with the waveforms. I'll close that palette. And again, I'll go up and change the tempo to 76 beats per minute. Let's do that like so. Let's have a listen now. Lovely, like magic. If you're enjoying these tips, by the way, just let me know by clicking on the like button for me. And if you like these kind of tips in general, all about cakewalk and stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get to see my other videos. Now, on to the next tip. So if you ever use audio loops, then this one is for you. I've got a project here which I've got set to 75 BPM. And often you'll find that you either really want it to be at a specific tempo or you need it to be at a specific tempo. Maybe you've got some existing material there already, which is at that tempo. You really want it to be that. Now, I've got some loops here which I want to use in this project, but they're both at slightly different tempos. So the main project's at 75. The drum loop, which I've got here, is at 76 beats per minute. And the guitar guitar loop I've got here is at 71 beats per minute. Annoyingly, just a little bit off. So let's start off with the guitar. I'm just going to grab that loop here and I'm just going to drag it over here. It creates that audio uh, track there. I'll just expand that, drag it out a little bit. And if we have a quick play with the uh, metronome switched on, you'll hear it go out of time. <laughs> Okay, so we need it to fit into these four bars here. And because it's a little bit slow, it's going on a little bit too long. So all we need to do is hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and drag the end of that clip across. And then that's going to fit into that space perfectly. Let's have a listen now. Apart from a little bit of sloppy playing, it's more or less in time there. So let's do the same with these drums. These drums are at 76 beats per minute. They're almost at the right tempo, but not quite right. Let's just drag it across there. That creates that new track. I'll expand it, drag that down there, and let's have a listen to those drums. Okay, no good. So again, we hold control and shift on the keyboard and I'm just going to drag this out. I've got snap turned on. I'm just going to snap it to that bar there. It's just a slight difference with those drums, but they should now be in time. Let's have a listen. Listen. 
Cool. So I'll just grab those, copy them, uh, go over to that second bar there, paste them in, and I've got uh, my little drum loop with my guitar there. Now, sometimes when you're actually stretching things out like this, you may find that the audio sort of degrades a bit. That's always the risk with stretching whatever uh, door you're using. I'm just going to right click on that there and do bounce the clip. OK, that's done that and I'll do the same. I would have done it before I copied it. I could do the same on this one. Um, that can improve things a little bit if you're getting too many artifacts in your audio and you can really hear that stretching. It can't always be saved, but that's something I always try to do if I'm getting those artifacts. So if you found any of this confusing whatsoever, please do ask in the comments down below and I'll try my very best to help you out. If you found this useful, make sure you hit the like button for me. That helps me out. And if you do find these videos useful in general, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about my other videos. Now, if you'd really like to help this channel out, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com. There's a link for that in the description down below. And for as little as $1 per month, you can help me help you by making more videos like this one. So thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video.